Man, the weather is all over the place out there, and I'm gonna break out the Dutch oven and go outside and cook it. Weather's been pretty crazy here in Bakersfield uh, today. We had rain most of the morning and then a lot of clouds and stuff like that, kind of gloomy looking. And now the sun's coming and going, partly cloudy, I guess, and breezy. So when we go outside and cook, probably gonna get some uh, noise in the microphone from the wind, so I apologize for that, but it is what it is. We're gonna get in the Dutch oven. I'm looking for some comfort food, so let's get right to it. I'll show you what I'm gonna be cooking with, and then we'll go from there. We have bone-in chicken thighs, some heavy cream, kosher salt, unsalted butter, white pepper, black if you don't have it, dried thyme, fresh also works, some diced garlic, sun-dried tomatoes, baby bella mushrooms, and some fresh basil, olive oil, and a little bit of white wine. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and salt and pepper both sides of our chicken. So I'll just sprinkle some kosher salt on there. Oops, that's a little heavy. But that's all right. This stuff's gonna be in a liquid, so go ahead and get this pepper distributed on this side. Plenty of it, like always. Okay. And we'll get some salt on this side of it. We want it to be a little bit salty because we're going to stir this and just like, I don't know if you saw the braising video, but some of this spice is going to become part of the sauce actually, so. Alright, so there's our chicken. It's, it's going to sit and rest this way while we get the rest of the stuff prepared. Okay, I've got some good sized basil leaves here and I'm going to go ahead and kind of julienne cut them by rolling them tightly this way. They don't have to be this big a leaf, it just happens to be what they had available when I bought this, but just roll it up kind of tightly like that, and then you can take your knife and thinly slice it. Just like that. Man, that smells good. I love the smell of basil. Okay, so there's basil. We'll go ahead and have this ready. Uh, mushrooms. Thank you. 
and I know how to do it right there. Okay, so we've got everything ready. I'm gonna go get some charcoal going and we're gonna take the Dutch oven outside and we'll get this mess started. One ingredient I forgot to add, so if you're making a list, you wanna add this to it, you're gonna need some chicken stock. So I'm gonna work from a dry soup base, but you can also get canned broth or whatever. Uh, you'll want some chicken stock and low sodium. If you can get a hold of it, remember you can always add salt in if you need it, but you, you really can't get it out that easy. So I'm gonna mix this up kind of mild because we're gonna do a little bit of reducing with the liquid, so I don't want it to get too salty. I'm gonna be placing the Dutch oven down inside of my Weber One Touch kettle pit. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want the sides of the pit to serve as a windbreak. We got a cold, chilly kind of breeze running through here, a little bit of wind. And I don't want that, that uh, cold breeze blowing the heat off of my iron on my oven. Plus, if we, if we get rain, we've been uh, getting a little bit of rain today off and on. If I get a little rain, then I can at least uh, cover the, uh, the Dutch oven up with the, the lid on this, this kettle and protect it from the rain. So we'll get these coals put down in here and then we'll uh, go ahead and set the Dutch oven in there and I'll show you how we build this thing up. Okay, so we've dropped three tablespoons of butter in there, so I'm just going to get this butter melted down in the bottom of this pot, let it get good and hot. And then we're going to put the chicken in there skin side down and give it a nice sear. Here we go. Skin side down and we're just going to let these things sizzle for however long it takes um, to get the uh, the color we want on, on the uh, skin. And we'll kind of shift them around because you can see where the butter is browning in the center. That's where we got the most concentration of heat. So we'll just move this stuff around and uh, until we get them all just where we want them. Okay, let's check this. All right, there is what we're looking for right there. That's the color we want on the top of this chicken. So we'll pull this one out and then we'll take a look at the other ones. I'm, yeah, that one looks nice. I'm sure that there's uh, there's some that we're gonna have to move into the center to brown up a little bit better, but these are looking pretty good. Yeah, so there's a little bit more to do. That one there looks pretty good. So you get the idea. Uh, we'll get them there and get them pulled out of this pot. Okay, so we're going to build our sauce starting with some white wine. Put a good amount of white wine in there. Then we're going to go ahead and add some chicken stock. Probably about a cup and a half, maybe two cups of chicken stock there. And then we're going to bring in a little bit of heavy cream. A good amount of it, but not too much of it. That's going to be the liquid base for our, for our sauce. So we're going to go ahead and start bringing the other ingredients in. So we're going to bring in a 
pretty good amount of minced garlic in here. I like a lot of garlic in my stuff, so I really put it in there pretty thick. You can do it to whatever is going to work for you. Really, that goes for most of my ingredients. And we're going to go ahead and add the minced mushrooms in there. And then the basil. And finally, we're going to come in with the uh, sun-dried tomatoes. And again, I like to put a good amount of those in there. Plenty of white pepper, black if you don't have it. And then we're going to bring in a pretty good amount of, of uh, dried thyme. You can also use fresh thyme for this. I just didn't have it available. So the dried thyme does it perfectly good, especially for something like this. It's going to be in that, that liquid for a little while. This li liquid is going to act as a braise, and it's going to become a beautiful sauce when it's all done. Later on in the video, I'll give you some details on, on how I finish that sauce off. And then, of course, kind of a last minute idea, I decided to go ahead and bring in some red chili flakes just to kind of add another layer of flavor in there. So we'll get, we'll get those in there. And not too much. We didn't want to really make it like a real spicy thing, but it's just a little bit for flavor. And we'll just whisk that all together, get it all incorporated good, and and then that's going to be our uh, our braising liquid slash sauce. Okay, so now we're going to add our chicken into the stock and we're going to do that skin side up and try to leave a little bit of gap between each piece of chicken so that there's a place for the liquid to run in between them and you just place each of them in there you can see how deep that liquid is it's not super deep you don't want it to be the sauce will actually build up a little bit over time because the chicken's going to render a lot of uh, water and a lot of fat out of that skin and stuff uh, so that's going to build the sauce up, but we're going to still cook it down, and then I'll, I'll kind of go over what we do with it a little bit later because we're going to deal with that fat. So we're going to go ahead and add the remainder of uh, our baby bell mushrooms into this. I like these earthy flavors in this kind of food, and I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of tuck them down in between the sides because I don't want the skins to be covered because they're going to continue to roast from the top of this oven uh, the heat that comes down it'll uh, it'll roast just like an oven we've covered up the pot with the lid and I threw some coals up there now I'm going to put a few of these unlit coals and they'll eventually kind of light and keep it going so uh, low maintenance from this point we're just going to kind of let it sit out here and do what it's got to do probably for about an hour before we check on it All right, let me tell you what's going on here. I got a pot of hot boiling water going. I'm going to take this kale, I'm going to drop it in there. And I just want to blanch it. I don't want to cook it in there. But kale is a very tough green. Ultimately, it's going to go out on the grill. But I just need to, uh, to break it down a little bit. So I'm going to put that in there, cover that, give it a couple of minutes, and then it's going to come out I'm gonna drain it and then I'm gonna hit it with some cold water and stop it from cooking and then we're gonna hold that until we're ready to go out there and grill it okay we're gonna throw some olive oil into this bowl here
sprinkle in a little garlic powder. Lots of garlic powder. A little bit of onion powder. Pinch of black pepper. And we're gonna get that all incorporated. Perfect. Okay, so we'll uh, just wait on that uh, Dutch oven out there to do its magic and this is all ready to go. We're gonna wind up basically just brushing all these vegetables down with this olive oil and we'll sprinkle whatever amount of salt we, we want on there and they're gonna go out on the grill and become something beautiful. Okay, with Blanche, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this hot water. Then we're gonna immediately hit it with cold water and flash cool it. That's going to stop it from cooking. Okay, so we got the kale all nice and cold again. And now I'm just kind of patting it dry. Let's dry up a little bit. But that's what you're looking for. A little bit of wilt, but it's not soft. It's still got lots of texture to it. Okay, so now we just... We're just in waiting mode for the main dish to come up. All right, let's take a look at what we got so far. I'm just gonna ladle some of this fat out from the top of this. It's all this stuff that rendered from the chicken skins. It'll all be right on top. Just like that, just, just skim on the top. Okay, so we've got everything off of the pit now and we're getting ready to plate this up. Uh, I gotta tell you, we had a lot of challenges today trying to get this uh, footage put together. I had everything that could interrupt video shooting that could possibly happen. Everything from phones ringing, dogs barking, jet airplanes flying overhead, wind, uh, wind pollution, you know, noise pollution from wind getting into my microphone. It was just everything, but you know, I, I got the footage I needed. Uh, I improvised by doing some narration tracks for it, and hopefully it's good enough to uh, give you, well, there we go again, there's a phone ringing, so I'm not even gonna mess with it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I was able to get it all put together, and you got the gist of what I was pulling off here, so I'm gonna close this video out of plating this. You'll see what all I did. Um, I will say, uh, this is kind of important, I didn't film this part of it, but. What I did was I took that sauce and separated it from the meat, put the meat on a cooking sheet back into the holding oven. And I put it into a saucepan and I went ahead and removed every little bit of remaining fat that was at the top of that sauce. I just don't like that fat in there for a lot of reasons. Obviously it's not good for you. Uh, if you're an older guy like me, you don't feel good when you eat a lot of that stuff either. Um, but it also messes with the texture of the sauce and it's, you know, 
and the presentation on top of that. So we got all that fat from the top of that sauce. I went ahead and brought it back up to heat and I let it simmer down and reduce and thicken. So we had a little thicker sauce, it's a little watery when it first comes out. So you can do it that way. Um, if you're under time crunch, you can you know use a thickener like maybe a little cornstarch and cold water, add it in there and bring that up to a simmer and it'll, it'll thicken up. Um, but anyway, however you do it, the taste is absolutely phenomenal. If you cook this uh, for your friends, they're gonna think you're some kind of master food god or something. Um, it's gonna be even more impressive if you go outside in a Dutch oven and you're in camp somewhere and you do this. But you can do it on your stove top. Um, you can do it in a cast iron skillet on a stove top and then transfer it over to the oven, same process, uh, and it's phenomenal. So give it a shot and I'll show you what these images look like uh, when we put it on the plate. And until then, we'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. I got more good stuff coming your way.